Tom. And we are back. Welcome to another edition of the Tom Hartman Program. I am Richard R.J. Gow, sitting in for Tom, who is on vacation this week. Today we'll be talking more about the tragedy in Orlando and about what it says about us as a society, as a people, as a mix, a mi- melting pot, if you will, of different cultures and different ways of life, and of course, about the politics of all of this. But first, let's go directly to a guest who's joining us now from Orlando. Uh, Susanna Randolph is a candidate for Congress there. She is running in the Democratic primary in uh, the 9th District of Florida. That's Alan Grayson's old district. And uh, we will learn more about Susanna, her race and her experience of this tragedy in Orlando in just a moment. Susanna, thanks for joining us. Thanks, RJ. It's great to be on. And um, unfortunately, under terrible circumstances, we have to discuss this, especially from our Orlando community here. Yeah, I, 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 my heart goes out to you. Our sympathies go to you and everybody in Orlando. Uh, personally, I know what it's like to be part of a community that's been struck by tragedy like this, and it is uh, very tough, but it also reminds us of what's really important in life, doesn't it? It really does, and it's unfortunate that you and many others know this experience. Uh, there's too many communities that have had this experience, and um, when it when it happens to yours, it's uh, I think most of us have been having a fairly out-of-body experience for the last 48 to 72 hours in dealing with this. Um, and I think yesterday, for a lot of us, it really started hitting home in a in a really real way. Uh, so our community um, our community came together in a, an extraordinary way last night uh, at a vigil in downtown Orlando, and um, I think it was a it was a, an important moment for healing and comfort for everybody. Um, but I know that a lot of people are talking about taking action to make sure this does not happen anywhere else. And I want to talk to you about that, Susanna Randolph, but first, so that our our guests uh, know a little bit more about you and who you are, who we're talking to, if if you will. You are running uh, in the Democratic primary in the 9th Congressional District. Uh, Tell us just very briefly about yourself, if you would, and your own background. So my background is a community organizer. I've worked for a lot of social justice, environmental, and women's groups throughout my life, um, working in the community uh, to make sure that we're, you know, protecting women's health, we're protecting the right to vote for uh, largely disenfranchised and unempowered communities. Um, And so, um, you know, our roots here are very deep uh, in working with all communities across uh, across a wide spectrum um, to making sure that we're improving the lives for average people here in central Florida, not just Orlando, but throughout um, the kind of I-4 corridor in Florida, as we're known. Um, and so that's kind of my background. And so a lot of the, you know, the organizations that are really coming together in the wake of this are groups that we've worked with for a long time to really amplify our voices. Um, most recently, I was Congressman Grayson's district director, so I've actually worked in District 9 uh, constituent services, you know, working with um, with people in the community, um, you know, and dealing with some other, with other shootings that have occurred in the community. We had a incident of domestic violence uh, that a, a, you know a gunman came into a hair salon over in the kind of eastern part of Orlando, and that was something we dealt with through the congressional office back in 2013. So. So, yeah, unfortunately, you're all too familiar with this kind of tragedy. Now, let me um, yeah. l- let me ask you, and I'm sorry to start with the politics before we go to the human side, but I just want to understand that so that we're all kind of talking sure. in context here. Um, so you are running in the Democratic primary at this mm-hmm. point. Uh, how many opponents do you have? What would you say is the difference between you and uh, them or individual or plural? Um, I th- we have about four to four or five people. I mean, qualifying is coming up at the end of next week, so we will kind of know what the field is like because there's always some surprises, uh, you know, in the race. But um, we have about four opponents right now. Um, I think, you know, the difference is, um, you know, we are the real progressive in the race. We've been I've been endorsed by the uh, Congressional Progressive Caucus, um, Emily's List, um, you know, Democracy for America, the Progressive Change Campaign Committee. Um, you know, as a community organizer, I've worked in the progressive community for a really long time, and especially in this community, um, deeply with people in the in the district, uh, constituents, 
organizations, uh, local governmental bodies. You know, we worked really hard last year with the Osceola County Commission to pass what is now the strongest wage theft ordinance in the state to really help people who are struggling economically. We do have the lowest wages uh, and benefits of any area in the country in Central Florida. Um, and so economic equal- equality is a very important issue here. So we've worked very closely and very uh, deeply on that. You know, I think that there are I've got, they're running against a politician who's been a state senator for a while in this area, um, but who tends to be a much more uh, moderate to conservative uh, candidate, especially on gun issues. And that's, that's where this is, I think the rubber's really meeting the road in this race on this issue. And then um, a few other folks, but he's really kind of the main competition yeah and I, I and that's i i do want to get to gun issues because uh, we're going to be talking about that a lot today on this program and i it's something that you know i personally feel and i think a lot of people feel at this point it's no longer up for negotiation it's no longer up for mm-hmm. finessing we have to do something about it and before we uh, go into that um I also want to say, by the way, that my father used to live in the Orlando area. I know it a little bit, and uh, my just outside Orlando. I, I uh, my sense is uh, basically just in terms of working people there that you have Disney and you have everybody else in terms of employers, and that may or may not be correct. But my sense is that essentially you have one powerful employer and then a lot of scattered employers and a lot of low wage workers, right? Yeah, and actually, um, it's, uh, you know, I've gotten endorsed by the Disney Service Trade Council Union, which represents a lot of the Disney workers, um, a lot of unionized employees there. So the, the, um, they have a lot of fairly good representation. It's kind of the residual right. service industry, tourist industry, where we see a lot of uh, the wages being very low, hours being changed a lot, like scheduling being an issue um, for working people. Um, but a lot of those core issues, um, you know, we're fighting really hard for 15. That's been a strong right. uh, push for our campaign. Right. But because... also, um, yeah. I mean, that's, that is a huge issue because of the, um, you know, the, the service industry that exists down here that is very centered on tourism, you know, entertainment, uh, you know, restaurants, hoteliers, you know, making sure that people can live on the wages that they're being paid. We see a lot of that. Uh, that being a huge problem here. Yeah, uh, I, w- what I remember from your district, uh, Susanna Randolph, is that um, everything is named World after Disney World. There, <laughs> so so we. I, I think you probably, in terms of that fight for fifteen, it's not so much for the probably at the workers at Disney World. It is as it is for the workers at T-shirt World and Snack Food World and Transmission Overhaul World and all the other places you have down there, right? Yeah, exactly. And um, and so those are those are key issues. I mean, we have families that live in hotel rooms on Highway 192 down in Kissimmee, and this is after a week's worth of work. I mean, these are not folks who are sitting around not working. These are people who are working hard every week. I mean, they sometimes work two and three jobs and can literally only for an, afford a hotel room. You know, right. and, you know, as a mom, I think about this every night when I put my daughter to bed. I think about there's a mom and a dad on 192 in Kissimmee. There's several moms and dads, if you know, who are putting their kids to bed, not knowing if that's going to be the room that they sleep in the next night. Absolutely. Next night and working and, and either having to work two jobs and not spending time with their kids or not knowing if they're going to be able to feed them either. So Susanna Randolph, candidate for Congress from Orlando area. If you can stick with us when we come back, we'll talk a little more. I am Richard R.J. Escal for Tom Hartman. We'll be right back. Back on the Tom Hartman Show, I'm Richard R.J. Eskow sitting in for Tom, and with us is Susanna Randolph, who is running for Congress in Florida's 9th District. And you know, Susanna, um, the film director Werner Herzog once used the analogy, he said, chemists find out what uh, minerals are made of by putting them under pressure. And sadly, you folks in Orlando are under pressure right now, but in response, you wrote what I thought was a beautiful and powerful a note that was distributed through Democracy for America uh, about the experience you went through getting the calls from family and friends after the shooting and having to explain to your four-year-old daughter what's going on. Um, first of all, how are you holding up and how are the people around you holding up? We're, um, I think, 
we're doing better. Yesterday, I think the what, Sunday was running around trying to figure out how to help everybody. And I have to say, I am I am speechless and in awe of my community and how beautiful the response was. We immediately got dressed. We leapt out of bed as soon as we knew uh, what had happened. We leapt out of bed, got my four-year-old dressed, ran down to the blood bank. The line was already out the door. And throughout the day, you saw the line go all the way around. It snaked around three times. And we watched people come with water. It started, it, it was kind of, uh, it was it was amazing to see water, then cookies, then bananas, then people brought pe- peaches and apples and sandwiches and pizza, then, you know, food trucks started showing up. And, and it was just, people were then bringing umbrellas for shade. And it, it was just, it was amazing to watch people just rally in the most beautiful way. So in, in Sunday was very much rallying, trying to figure out how to help. There were events, there were, there was a vigil, but yesterday, I think that the, the the reality really hit for a lot of people. We spent a lot of time with people on the phone, a lot of crying, a lot of uh, people really feeling the emotion around what had occurred. And then um, last night we had a vigil with literally thousands and thousands of people that showed up. That was just the most beautiful expression. I think people really needed that come together to heal, to heal and to comfort each other. And um, it was it was like nothing I have ever seen. So it, um, and then, you know, I think the other reality that hit us all was watching these vigils happen around the country and around the world. And for all of us, it was surreal to know that that was for us. We, um, you know, you got the every town email and it said Orlando in the subject line. It's not supposed to, you know, we all just look right. at it. It's not supposed to say Orlando. It's not supposed to say anywhere. But when we saw our community in the email, it was just, it, it just hit us like a ton of bricks. So, you know, having me explain it to my four-year-old daughter was difficult because she could sense the urgency and the fear that she saw in our eyes and, and heard it in our voices. And we had to explain to her what, what occurred. And it was very, um, it was very powerful what we went through with that. And, and you know, um, the other thing that was really disturbing was, you know, my, I got woken up by my friend saying, are you okay? And I said, well, what are you, you know, what right. are you talking about? Because it had happened in the very early part of the morning. And she said the shooting. And I said, we had actually had a shooting on Friday night and, or Saturday night, I think it was, no, Friday night. And um, I said, no, well, it was, a, it was tragic, but it was, you know, it was kind of, a, I think, a stalker situation. She said, no, there's been another shooting. So the fact that we had to specify which shooting had occurred was also extremely disturbing in that moment. It it tells us there's a major problem that we have got to get under control in this country. Really. It was, uh, it was powerful. You know, and, and that's exactly, first of all, thank you for sharing all of that. And I so empathize. I was working in, um, Mm -hmm. in the world trade center area until just, uh, just very shortly before the attack there. And a lot of people were looking for me at that time as well. So uh, I, I certainly remember. Um, and let's let, let, let's close with that. Let's 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 talk about that for a minute, okay? Uh, you have, I, I think you said your major opponent is NRA friendly. I mean, isn't it time yeah. that we just said enough is enough? That this is not an issue to be finessed or nuanced or 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 to play both sides or to be a blue dog or do any of those things that Democrats like to say. Isn't it enough to just draw the line and say you don't get my vote? if you're not willing to end this madness once and for all? Absolutely. The fact that we could not take action to reinstate the assault weapons ban after Newtown, that was, for me, there were, my daughter was eight months old when Newtown happened, and I, my, I felt every bit of Newtown in my heart and soul, in my body. It was the it was the most, it did not happen in my community, but it was one of the most horrific memories I will ever have. Having, it was a new mom at the time. It was, it was the most hard hitting thing I can imagine happening in my life other than now, right? And, um, the second time that I really wept, I really did. As I was, I was a, a district director in a congressional office. And when we, when the Senate failed to act after Newtown was the second time that I cried. Because how can we not? How is it that an interest uh, a special interest 
can overwhelm or overcome the, the cry, the desperate cries from our country that a, a classroom of six-year-olds that is supposed right. to be a safe and sacred place is so utterly and, and violently violated that that can't motivate us for action. We, we have got to take, it is time. There are, yeah. it is, this is the moment right now that we have to do this draw the line and say that we have to we have to stop this kind of thing from happening i so, couldn't and i'm ready to do it <laughs> uh, well, so. well i think we need to send you to congress so you can do it as i i told somebody i debated during the whole uh newtown tragedy uh, i'm not anti-gun per se i'm pro kindergartner and if you can't choose you. children and young people and gay people and everybody else who dies by guns in this country over your fetish for guns, then, well, we just need to replace you with somebody who will. Susanna okay. Randolph, RandolphForCongress.com. Thank you so much for joining us. Thank you. And we'll be right back after this. Stick with us. I'm Richard R.J. Escow in for Tom Hartman. We'll be back. To watch more clips from our programs, hit the Watch More Videos button over here. And please be sure to hit the handy-dandy subscribe button so you'll always be up to date. Tag, you're it.